The number two House Republican refused to say that the 2020 election was not stolen from Donald Trump, while the Biden administration blocked an attempt by Trump to withhold documents related to the investigation of the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. There's a lot going on right now from the GOP's ongoing attempts to dismantle democracy to centrist Democrats holding up President Biden's agenda to Bernie Sanders holding press conferences in a leather chair therapist style. <laughs> How will we pay for it? Oh, what a great question. That is a new one. I've never heard that one before. I'm gonna write you a note that says tax the rich <laughs> and a prescription for some ginkgo biloba. But here's a moment from last week that pretty much sums up my feelings about the current state of our politics. Biden was asked about a short-term deal to avert economic catastrophe and raise the debt ceiling. In response, he crossed his fingers, although at first I thought he was going for a very different hand gesture. Mr. President, do you support the short-term debt ceiling deal? It really does encapsulate where we're at politically, that every response is a coin flip between hoping for the best and then <laughs> off. I definitely thought Biden was going full bird there, mostly because of his technique. Yes, his fingers were crossed, but he brought it up like he was cranking with the other hand. <laughs> this was the risk we took when we elected President Finger Guns. Those things <laughs> are deadly weapons. They make him run it through the metal detector when he comes to work every morning. With Trump, I was always worried he was gonna say the wrong thing to a world leader, but with Biden, I'm afraid a hand gesture is gonna get away from him. Bad news, the president tried to do a I see you to the Sultan of Brunei, and instead he slipped and he three stooged him. What? <laughs> Why didn't the Sultan do a block hand? I guess they don't have the stooges there. <laughs> During the time you were gone, we did a lot of um, MASH references, uh, Star Trek, uh, Next Generation, but obviously now human beings here, we had to freshen it up with the Stooges. <laughs> While Biden was desperately trying to convince Republicans to do the bare minimum to avert potential economic catastrophe over the debt ceiling, he was also refusing an attempt by his predecessor to shield documents from a congressional investigation into the insurrection on January 6th. NBC News first to report earlier today that the Biden White House has decided, in fact, not to block the release of documents related to Trump, his presidency, and the insurrection. The move sets up a, le a legal and potentially lengthy showdown between two presidents, current and former, over the issue of executive privilege. The White House is blocking former President Trump from playing the executive privilege card, and the committee investigating the January 6th insurrection says Donald Trump's minions will not get away with ignoring the rule of law. Okay, now that's definitely a middle finger. So. Trump thought he could just unilaterally assert executive privilege, no questions asked. You're not president anymore, dude. That's not how it works. What's he gonna do next? Try to book a flight on Air Force One? What do you mean I can't use the plane anymore, but what about all those miles I racked up? <laughs> Can I transfer them to JetBlue? JetBlue! <laughs> we love JetBlue, don't we, folks? <laughs> JetBlue, the first place I ever had a terror chip, and I remember. <laughs> I remember I said to the stewardess, there's something wrong with my chip, it's red. <laughs> I have a red chip, and she told me, she said to me, sir, tears in her eyes, she said, sir, that's a seasonal root vegetable. <laughs> now, before we dive into that story any further, the executive privilege story, not the Trump JetBlue terror chip story. <laughs> I think we got all we're gonna get from that. They said we couldn't do tangents when the audience came. We're gonna do, we're gonna take a few tangents. I do think. I do think it's worth taking a quick step back to acknowledge this is our first show with a live audience in 19 months. Well, to be fair, we did have a full audience one night this summer, but they didn't laugh at anything, so we just pretended they weren't there and decided to wait a while before trying again. It's been a long, strange trip. We did a show in my attic and my in-law's house. I befriended Ethan Hawke in a painting of a sea captain. I grew my hair out and I started dressing casually by choice and not as the Daily Mail reported because I had to sell my suits to cover gambling losses incurred when I took the under on the Mets having one <laughs> season. <laughs> Second Mets joke. First one was in the monologue, so if you only watch this online, you gotta go back and watch the monologue now. <laughs> What's that, you're not going to? 
Because you live in Austria and you hate the Mets jokes? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Over the last 19 months, I became closer with my crew, who were the only feedback I had in real time. Speaking of the crew, oh! <laughs> Oh, that's very interesting, because earlier today, Wally said, I bet the first time you cut to me, I'll get a round of applause from the audience, and yet... Doesn't count. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't count, because you didn't do it. <laughs> you did nothing. When we cut to him, you did nothing, and I had to say it, and then you did it, so it doesn't count. Doesn't count, Wally. That was too fast of a cut. You didn't stipulate how fast the cut would be. This is an outrage. Oh, we spent so much time together. We finished each other's sentences. <laughs> the point is, right up until you gave Wally what he wanted, I'm thrilled to be back in front of an audience. <laughs> and I'm just hoping my audience is a little more enthusiastic than Trump's audience. The man just refuses to go away. On Saturday, he went to Iowa to hold yet another rally where he repeated the same deranged lies about the election that he's been repeating for months. And yet, even his own crowd wasn't exactly electrified by hearing the same old incoherent nonsense over and over again. You know, I was up by l massive numbers on election day. It was even the news was saying, wow, what a big lead in Pennsylvania. I love Pennsylvania. I went to school in Pennsylvania, college. But what a great state, and what great people. And I was up by so much, all of a sudden, the booths closed, the tabulation centers are closed, 3 o'clock in the morning. And shortly thereafter, we're tied. They know they got caught. All you have to do is listen to the numbers. And remember what I said. Joe Biden has launched a foreign invasion of his own country. Come on in. He said, come in. This is, a, uh, this, is a sick, this is a sick thing that's happening to our country. Wow, and I was worried about bringing audiences back. <laughs> I never thought I'd say this, but maybe you should go into lockdown. You know, remote shows might be better for you. You could borrow my attic. Although, <laughs> if you were in my attic, I'd never get any sleep. Honey, what's that noise? I think he's talking about how windmills kill birds. It's too... <laughs> Two in the morning. I know, but he had like 50 Diet Cokes. <laughs> Why did you let him use our attic? Because he used to be president. I'm sorry that I respect the office. <laughs> also, I love the cutaways to sullen Trump fans just standing there in silence like tourists watching one of those gold statue guys in Times Square. <laughs> so is he gonna like, do something? <laughs> and you could tell Trump was waiting for a crowd reaction too. I mean, look at him. It's like watching a open mic night at the senior center. Joe Biden said, come on in, come on in. Am I right? <laughs> Cyrus knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Cyrus? <laughs> Cyrus? <laughs> Get the paddles, what else? It's been liberating not having to think or care about what this lunatic says or does on a daily basis for the last few months. Unfortunately, the GOP has not felt the same way, they're still fully devoted to Trump. He was joined at his rally by Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley. Virtually the entirety of the Republican Party remains enthralled to Trump and committed to the big lie that the election was somehow stolen from him. As demonstrated by this interview, the number two House Republican Steve Scalise did on Fox News Sunday. Do you think the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump? And, and in continued, continuing to make that charge, not uh, having states do election reforms, but specifically making this charge that the election was stolen, do you think that that hurts, undermines American democracy? Well, Chris, I've been very clear from the beginning. If you look at a number of states, they didn't follow their state passed laws. The states all certified. They didn't follow those legislative rules. Right, but at the end of the day, are we going to follow what the Constitution says? Do you think the election was stolen or not? I understand you think there were irregularities and things that need to be fixed. Do you think the election was stolen? Yeah. And it's not just irregular. It's states that did not follow the laws set which the Constitution says they're supposed to follow. I like how they say the word irregularities without actually specifying what that means. It's that vague mafia talk they've all adopted. It's a shame what happened to your restaurant, but the boss got your last payment, and there was some uh, irregularities. <laughs> These guys can't actually give any example of widespread fraud because there aren't any. as multiple audits and roughly 60 court cases, including with several Trump-appointed judges proved. But all they have are these bad 
conspiracy theories promoted by the rotating cast of weirdos who inhabit Trump's orbit, rambling incoherently about nonsense like Italian satellites, hacking voting machines, or mysterious midnight election dumps, or bamboo fibers on ballots. Last week, my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, once again repeated the insane claim that dead people had somehow voted. I'll give you an example today. 2,650 people over the age of 100. Now, you might say, well, well, that's, that could be, that could be. 2,000 of them were over 200. Wouldn't you like to live in that state? Granted, two, they were 200 and some years old. So, so obviously, they, and one guy was 800. They were 200 years old. These people that, live, that are voting are 200 years old. Of course, they're obviously not living. They're obviously but deceased, but one guy was 850 years old. Okay. <laughs> Um, and these are and these are facts. You can get them. You can get them from your own state's thing. First of all, we know an 850 year old who voted. Okay, he was on TV. <laughs> that's why. That's why Rudy's neck is hunched. He sleeps in a coffin that's one size too small. <laughs> I couldn't afford the king size because I'm paying alimony to my cousin. <laughs> it's not taboo amongst vampires. <laughs> the immortal just have less to choose from. I also like how Lindell says these are facts, but then he can't even name the database where he got them. He just says you can get them from your own, your own state's thing. <laughs> I went online to the thing and saw all the dead people who voted by looking at their birthdays and counting up the years. Well, that's nice, yeah. Nice to finally road test the Lindell in front of an audience. Yep. Crowd pleaser. Crowd pleaser. <laughs> Did you see my new lion painting? <laughs> I hope the lion's not too big. I'd hate for the lion painting to take away from my points. Lindell, of course, is being sued for defamation by the election technology company Dominion, and now even a deep red state like Idaho is sending him a bill for an election audit because his claims were bogus. And Lindell's not the only one facing financial hardship thanks to his participation in the big lie. There's also Rudy Giuliani, who's reportedly drowning in legal bills after Trump refused to pay him. And now, in a newly released deposition, Rudy has explained why he worked for Trump without payment. An attorney in a defamation suit against Rudy asked Giuliani whether he was ever paid to represent the Trump campaign, Giuliani replied that he was not paid to represent the campaign and had been reimbursed for only his expenses, according to the transcript. The attorney then asked Giuliani why he would represent the Trump campaign without compensation. The president, the president ordered me to do it, Giuliani said. <laughs> Rudy, that's not how it works. Your client can't just order you to do something for free. You can't let Trump push you around anymore. You're a grown man, you're 850 years old. <laughs> and yet, aside from some potential financial consequences for weirdos like Rudy and Lindell, the co-conspirators who fomented the January 6th insurrection and orchestrated the attempted coup have largely escaped accountability, like Texas Senator Ted Cruz, who hasn't faced any consequences for his role in trying to overturn the election results on January 6th. In fact, Cruz is still there in the Senate causing chaos. Just last week, he was whining that the GOP had done the bare minimum to avert economic catastrophe and mustered just enough votes to help Democrats raise the debt ceiling at the last minute, although he chose a very weird analogy. I believe the end result of this game of chicken was clear. Unfortunately, yesterday, Republicans blinked. I think that was a mistake. But sometimes in a poker game, a bluff wins the pot. In this case, to mix my metaphors, which would make my high school English teacher very angry, in the game of chicken, Chuck Schumer won this game of chicken. As two trucks drove towards each other on a country road, one or the other was going to turn, or you were going to have a lot of dead chickens. What? What the hell are you talking? You think when two trucks play chicken on a country road, they have to be full of chickens? <laughs> that's not, that's not why they call it chicken. The hardest thing about the game of chicken is keeping your resolve 
It's trying to concentrate above the din of terrified chickens <laughs> in the truck, because of course, theirs are the lives at stake. The Republican Party has fully embraced Trumpism in the big lie. They're trying to install Trump loyalists in key positions across the country and passing laws that would make it easier to steal the next election. One of his lawyers wrote an instruction manual for a coup, which they could easily use next time. These people should face consequences for trying to destroy a democracy that so far has stood the test of time. In fact, if you ask Mike Lindell, he'd probably say it's- 850 years old. <laughs> this has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, get vaccinated, we love you.